what's up guys sick designs here and today I'm gonna teach you how to do this all right so as you can see there that is a pretty neat effect it's actually quite simple to do um, first thing you want to do go into render settings like always and change this 1280 by 720 uh, obviously this is HD so it's gonna look a lot better and you're going to go down to frame range and select all frames. Uh, also keep in mind, uh, if you're rendering this in HD, it's going to take longer, especially uh, depending on your computer. That plays a big part too. Uh, then just go down to save and change this to AVI movie because AVI format looks pretty good. Then go to anti-aliasing, change it to best, and then max level 8x8. Unless you've got a really fast computer, you can choose to do 16x16, which looks even better but 8x8 looks plenty good and so I'm just going to leave mine at 8x8 now that we've got a render setting set up we can go ahead and uh, go to uh, go ahead and start the project so the first thing we're going to do is go up to floor uh, create a new floor I've actually got a wood texture I'm going to just drag onto here because I, I like the wood texture look um, as my floor and yeah I basically just found a google image and uh, saved it and then just dragged it on there and uh, I'm just gonna add another add a reflection to it so whatever I place above the floor will be a reflection of that object now if you do uh, just wanna add a color or something like that you can double click down in this box and you can play around with these settings up here you know the f reflection and the color and that kind of thing and whenever you get finished you just take this and drag it onto the actual object or just drag it in up here so yep that's that um, okay so once you've got your four done and you got it textured we can right click on it up here and go to simulation tags and click on rigid body keep in mind I'm on cinema 4d r13.016 which is the latest version as of today um, anyways basically by making this a rigid body uh, the floor becomes like a solid and objects will interact with it, bounce off of it, break when it hits it instead of just sinking through the floor or going right through it. Just makes it uh, interact with other objects. And so the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to create a cube uh, just by going up to the cube icon and going to cube. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cube and I'm going to go down to my Y position and uh, select 100 or type in 100 and what this does is set it completely level on the floor so that it's not kind of going through the floor or sitting above it if that makes any sense it's sitting on the floor okay and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to create and I'm going to go down or up to shader and then go to new key and then I'm going to click on this and go to diffuse a click on color and I'm actually going to color the cube uh, whatever color I choose which I'm gonna go with the purple I'm just gonna drag that onto the cube once I've got my material created preview the image and so you can see what we've got so far it's that right there alright so now we just need some lighting into the scene and a couple other things and we'll be about done so I'm gonna go up here to the light bulb go to light I'm gonna pull this out a little bit and uh, bring this up <clears throat> Apologize for that, my computer is freezing up a little bit. And we're just going to bring this up. And then I always like to add shadows. This is optional, you don't have to do this. But if you would like to, just uh, select the light, go down to shadow, and then you'll see this little tab here. And it should automatically be set to none. Just change this to shadow maps soft. And then if we preview this, uh, we've got a nice shadow going on in the background. And say you want to cross shadow. You just add another light in here, bring it over, and we'll preview that. And it kind of lightens up the shadow a little bit. So you can see what we've got so far. Got that nice shadow going on there. And I believe if I just move this behind. Yeah, there we go. That looks that looks quite nice. Okay, so we've got that. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is select the cube just by clicking on it. Uh, you're gonna need a plugin named Throwsy. Um, I talked about this in the last video. 
I'm not going to cover how to install this. It is a plug-in for Cinema 4D. You can find plenty of tutorials out there that explain how to do this. It's very simple to, in to install it. Excuse me. And uh, so yeah, once you've got it installed, you're going to go to plugins, go to Throwsy, open it up. This is what you're going to see. First thing you're going to do is go to dynamic. You're going to change the mode to on collision. And then you're going to choose the amount of pieces you want to break this up into. I'm going to do 100 because, I mean, that's quite a bit, but it looks pretty cool. So I'm just going to hit break now. And basically what's going to happen is the plugins automatically going to break this cube up into 100 pieces, which is what you're seeing right now. All right, so now this cube is actually divided up into 100 pieces, as you can see here. Exactly 100. And now when an object hits this, it's ready to be broken. And, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. If we render it, it still looks like a normal cube, but it's actually uh, broken up into 100 pieces. And uh, so basically, how do we get this to break? Well, that's what I'm going to show you now. Uh, basically, we're going to go up to the cube icon again. And... Uh, you can select any object you want. It doesn't have to be a sphere, be anything, but I'm just going to use a sphere for this. And you're going to have to bring it up. And I really apologize for my computer freezing up. It's because I'm recording and using this program and uploading a quite large, quite a large uh, video file at the same time, so it's running quite uh, slow. But you can size this down by clicking the scaling option uh, up here. Make this any size you want. And then if we press F5 on the keyboard, we can get a top view. And notice I've got this directly centered already. But that's how you better judge where you want to place this is by using the top view instead of perspective. And also you've got front and right views. And then just press F1 if you want to get back to your perspective view. And so uh, if you've already scaled this down, you're going to want to go back up here to this uh, move tool. Select this again so you can move it up and down. I'm just going to bring this straight up. And then I'm going to add a texture to this. I personally like the new key type texture because it adds a nice uh, reflection to it and everything. So I'm going to go to create, shader, go down to new key again. And I'm going to make the ball, I'll just leave it um, white. And I'll make the illumination about 80%, so it's a little bit brighter. And I'll just drag that on here. So now if we render that, render preview, you got our ball right there. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is we can go ahead and right click on the sphere, go to simulation tags and make it a rigid body so that way it's a solid and will actually fall. And now we're ready to see the uh, collision happen. So here we go. Oh, and there you go. As you can see there, the cube uh, just completely explodes when the uh, sphere collides with it. So we'll see that again. If we go to render preview, this is what it's going to look like whenever it's completed. Obviously, this is going to be an animation. So, Now, uh, another cool thing I, want to, I would like to talk about is, uh, say right here I got a frame 27. If I want to like have this start in like full speed, like regular 100%, and then slow it down like during the animation, have it in slow-mo, you go to the frame that you wanna you wanna start the slow motion or whatever whatever that may be. So say right here, and I'm gonna go up to edit and I'm gonna go down to project settings, and uh, then I'm gonna go to dynamics. And right here you'll see that we have time scale. And uh, basically what you wanna do is control click on the time scale, move ahead about four frames, three or four frames, and then bring this down to the speed you want this to be at. So say I want to bring this down to like 25% speed, which is actually quite slow. Um, bring it down to 25%, control click again, and basically what this does is slows it down to that speed. So now if I play this animation, notice how it slows it way down to 25% there starts off at 100 and then slows way down and okay and now say you want to get it back to regular speed so I'm gonna uh, 
make my frames uh, so I have a lot more frames to work with. I'm just going to go uh, 200, for example, and then I'm going to take this bar and slot it all the way over. So now that we've got 200 frames to work with and we can make a longer animation. So we started off at 100, and then as soon as it collides, it slows down to 25%. And say we want to speed it back up along some point, say frame, frame 51. We're just going to control click again. We're going to go ahead about three or four frames, and then we're going to go back to 100%. Control click. And there you go, it'll play it out at 100% uh, once again. So here we go. Slow motion, and then 100%. So that's just kind of a neat little touch you can do. All right, so that's it, guys. That's pretty much what you saw in the demonstration. And I uh, hope you found this uh, video helpful, and hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did like it, uh, please put a thumbs up, uh, comment, and subscribe to my channel, because I'm going to be making a lot of these videos. And, uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Appreciate you guys watching this, and, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.